holding in. Three. Zero. Three. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, Richard has some meetings not working into the last minute he was unable to, to make it so he is um, giving us an opportunity to talk some amongst ourselves <laughs> facilitate conversation and all kinds of stuff. No? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, I will help facilitate some conversation tonight. Uh, you may get out of here real early in the best case and you're welcome. You know, and we'll discuss the scripture as long as the Lord leads us to again. I will say there's a lot of good stuff that's packaged speakers in as well. At least uh, we're, we're, what y'all are currently into is just some deep and rich scripture. So uh, it's going to be good in the sense that in a lot of ways, didn't have time to prep, so there's no need to prep because there's so much again the scripture tonight is going to be speaks for, uh, speaks for itself. It is so deep and so rich. Not that it all is not. Uh, it all is. But again, uh, I think what y'all uh, studying and certainly sort of where we're leading today. Richard's going to regret not making it tonight because I assure you uh, there's all kinds of gems in this uh, overview tonight that he would love to expound upon. So don't be surprised if he has a sort of back next week and hits some of some things as well. So. But anyway, we'll uh, start with our prayer concerns, prayer this, praises. I pray that Haley did receive her license and she's doing pretty good. We got 46 men headed to Santee Cooper Friday morning for a golf trip. Outstanding. 46 husbands, dads, granddads, you know. So be praying for mm -hmm. for us and the ones we're leaving behind, you know. Um, and where is it you're going? What golf Santee you? Cooper. It's just south of Myrtle Beach. Jane Foot. He's uh, been sick the last couple of days. And I have a praise for my daughter. She uh, became uh, assistant principal over there in Princeton. Elementary. Very good. 
Amen. Her name? Rita Vaughn. Uh, asking prayer for my grandfather, my mom's dad, and over her side of the family. He's not doing exactly well, and uh, there's a lot of division in that side of the family right now. It's been going on for a few years, so just prayer over that whole circumstance. His name, if you want to share? Uh, Joseph. We're not sure he's going to be with us much longer. Miss Sarah's birthday? Absolutely. Sarah. Praise. Miss Sarah's birthday is Friday. Friday. Outstanding. That's correct. Sarah. Miss Sarah. Miss Sarah. 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 My sweet little There's precious Sarah. 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 Yeah. They got up and moved from the table because Brian and I were picking up. <laughs> they did. Sure so. did. <laughs> Sitting there enjoying the shower on the Sunday. And next thing I know, I left. Miss Judy, Miss Judy, don't do that to the mom. Don't even have to talk to them. I think it's just because they didn't do a couple of stand up and walk away. So. No, we just enjoyed being with you. <laughs> what else? We also need um, prayer over uh, some job situations going on and everything, just as some decisions need to be made concerning that situation. Honestly, just amazed at the, what the man and family shoulders and again and his love for this church and this congregation and to just all those things too. So uh, obviously, continue to keep Richard and family in prayer. And again, again, just continue to thank for and bless for how we are blessed. So. I know the other Wednesday night when we met over there, we were talking about how long, much longer something you've been here. He said, "Thank but I'm going." He said, I'm going to stay here as long as He said, I don't want to leave your church family for <laughs>
uh, groups that have been so dedicated to this church. Dr. EBS, I said, uh, ministry going to Memphis, and pretty much all the ministries they have here in the summertime, because they seem to fade away people to go on vacation, so just pray that we stay strong in our, uh, our walk in that regards. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you again. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you again how you work in our lives during the day. But we do again we recognize that there are times when we don't speak our needs or petitions aloud. So Lord, again, we're so very thankful now that you're working in this situation. All of our instructions again long before we actually verbalize those things. And at times and very often again, Lord, you're at work long before we actually recognize the need again, Lord. We just thank you and praise you. Just praise you again, how you were that guiding light in our lives again, Lord. We just ask you to continue to open our, open our eyes again so we can recognize and appreciate the blessings that you put upon us each and every day, Lord. Again, as you continue to do so again, and that we be obedient and recognizing and praising you and glorifying you and all those things again that you do. And then we do come to you again with praise now again, Lord. Lord, thank first and foremost again for your son, Jesus Christ, again, and the salvation that's offered again for that belief and dedication and acceptance again for that gift that he has provided again, Lord. You have provided again to your son. Again, we so very much thank you and praise you for that as well. We praise you again for this church. We praise you for the congregation. We praise you again for our pastor, Richard, again, and his obedience and dedication to your word, again, and being a man of your word, again, a man who's willing to defend, and again, and stand toe to toe and defend what your word says in a society that is so quick to try to abandon it, a society that is so quick to try to tear it down again, Lord. May we all be obedient, Lord, again, and defending your word, defending our faith, again, and certainly sharing that with those that are around us again. We ask to continue to bless upon Richard and his family again, Lord. For whatever business again he has not again, we just pray that he does well. And again, we know that he is missed again, Lord. We again so very thankful again for the man he is an example he is he's for this church again, Lord. So we do again praise you again and thank you again for Haley and her driver's license again. Pray for continued safety for her as well as she now is on the road. And certainly the anxieties of uh, Sonia, Andy, and family again, Lord. Jesus always one of those milestones in our lives again, Lord. We ask for 
blessing on that family as well. Again, and just also continue to praise again for, as what David said too, the, the 46 men that are preparing for a weekend again. Certainly, a weekend that we pray is full of, of fellowship again and worship again and, and godly examples uh, to other men and the Lord so that they can, can see and just further build their spiritual walk with you. Lord. And so, we just pray for safety travels for them as well. Again, a blessing upon that time. Uh, but also, again, a safe keeping again, a blessing upon uh, the loved ones again as they leave this weekend as well. Lord. Again, just continue to praise again and just a prayer share. Again, we're thankful for how you work in our lives again and our daughters and our families again. And Mr. Fred's daughter, Rita, there, Lord, I'm uh, so very thankful again for her new role there and the sister principal there in Princeton and continue blessing upon uh, her and her position there too. But certainly, again, uh, school system as a whole, again, those children uh, so desperately need again strong. Godly men and women in their lives, again, Lord, we just pray for you to be that case again and just be that uh, oftentimes a mother, a father, a mother uh, for, for our students again who just like that prayer world. Lord, we thank you for that again. I do pray also for my daughter, my daughter. So very thankful again. I continue blessings upon Sarah. Ask her to continue to grow into that young lady that you have. have her destiny to be, Lord, and just continue to ask for prayers upon her too. And Lord, again, our ministries again, I'm so very thankful for an opportunity again. Not just to be a part of your family, Lord, again, but to go out and celebrate and declare the precious gift of you, the grace that you have provided again, Lord. So we ask for blessings upon DBS this summer, uh, the Memphis Ministries, as the TSM travels, but again, ministries as a whole, uh, Lord, again, may we continue to be obedient in your word. Uh, when, when we take vacation, those things again, and the schedules that seem to be a little more disrupted or out of routine again, Lord, uh, continue to keep our focus and our eyes on you, Lord, and continue to recognize again how you work again. Thank you for the ministries that this church supports in our community and ask for the kingdom blessings upon them as well too. For our brother Jeff and I, who is desperately needing, again, petitioning for uh, for help. Again, he needs some sleep, Lord, and we ask you to continue to again, help him in that situation. We just pray again his blood pressure lowers. We pray for the fluid that's good in that again, just uh, to receive again, Lord. We just pray for, for your hands uh, to be upon his body again, Lord, as he prepares for the procedure that is needed. Woodcock family again. Certainly, Lord, we're, we know that's continues to be a family in the community that is suffering from the loss, Lord. We ask for your grace again. We could continue to be upon that family again and lift them up in this time of mourning. Uh, continue to be with all those extended families again. So, certainly, through this certainly unexpected and tragic loss again, Lord. Lord, we just pray again in all things that we can see opportunity again for you to be glorified. Uh, Lord, we ask for that blessing as well. For Greg, Lord, like we do continue to. Pray for him again, Lord. We know that he is struggling uh, with schizophrenia and so many it's just kind of issues around that, Lord. Uh, we do pray. We pray again specifically for help for him to get the help that he's needed, uh, Lord, again, so he can, um, as Ms. Barbara said, he can just kind of stay out of trouble, Lord. Again. So uh, continue to hand upon Greg in situations with him. Gene, who's uh, not feeling well tonight, and Rob, uh, equally, or just not feeling well again for our brothers, we ask you to be with him. Lift them up, Google bodies, and, and mend them as well. And for, uh, as we mentioned earlier, our, our, our school systems as well. So many transition now. Uh, the teachers are retiring, and Stephanie's friend there, too, as Ms. Judy mentioned. But uh, so many things within our school system that certainly have a need for uh, As these kids, a lot of them, again, were transitioned to us, some to uh, homes that may not have uh, the food and resources that they're accustomed to during the school year. Uh, we ask the team to work in all those situations again, too, to just remind everyone in our teachers and students again, too, that their value is so much greater than a score or some DOG number or anything else that they can be tied to or labeled to again, Lord. Again, their value is in relationship uh, in you and your son, Jesus Christ, again, and your value is recognized that you as a great creator, Lord. We just thank you for praise for that, Lord. Pray your grandfather, Joseph, Lord, uh, who is not doing well. Again, we just pray for healing in this situation. We pray that you be with him. We also pray that you be with that family as well. Uh, and you look back there's some, um, just some Teaching some concrete dealing with the family and some issues there again. So we pray for family unity. Certainly pray for help and judgment in that situation again. again just a mending of families and family and fellowship in that situation again. We pray that in all that situation again, their eyes are turned upon you, Lord, so they can praise you and glorify you and see you as obvious and heaven in that situation as well. Lord, we do pray for Brother TJ again in that situation and the decisions that need to be made. We pray for discernment in that situation specifically. Uh, TJ's in a, in a tough bind again with the uh, Employer uh, who may not have acted in, in good faith, by the way, so that now TJ is uh, dealing with some of the consequences of that. So we just pray that you give him guidance. We just pray that you take the stress and anxiety.
ties away from that. One, again, the struggles of the uncertainty of our job situation, but also, again, um, the struggles of the stress associated with dealing with um, dissatisfied customers and a lot of money. We need to create specific amount of wisdom and direction and discernment in the PJ. And certainly, name is Miss Judy and her paint shop is coming up soon. Again, I'm so very thankful again that they had uh, a, a diagnosis, an opportunity again to give her some relief. We pray that that be successful again and that relief will be provided and that you bless her uh, during this time as well. For brother and sister Gerald and Melba, Lord, we again ask you to continue to be with them again. Lord, we miss them so much in our presence, uh, certainly in our, in our worship services and our evening services again. Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with them. Lord, make us a meeting. So much of it for granted. And we should just pray during this time that we've got to dive into it again. That you just bless our discussions. And that you can just open, open our eyes to the depth of which you can have us to, to get into your word again and recognize again the value it has in our lives even here today. Lord, we love you. In this precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Richard did say that y'all, uh, we have been in 1 Peter. So we will continue there tonight. <clears throat> so with that, we are going to kind of jump around a lot, so I will ask for some assistance for those who have the Bible ready to read, especially if my, uh, my tablet here dies with the battery before you get here. It looks like it's fading as we speak. But anyway, so we will read tonight our scripture for tonight. If you would like to join us in standing, we will, we will read that for you. First Peter chapter 2, we will be in verses 6 through 10 tonight. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Thank you very much, Dr. All right, I would again, I would just say, um, Wow to the good news. Wow to the good news. Again, the depth of the word, the depth of the scripture too. And again, we reiterate that there is richness in this scripture that Richard for sure will jump on again, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's worthy of a, of a three-week deep dive if you want to do just this scripture alone. And certainly, reflecting back on to four and five as well, um, one through five as we have. I've done before, but too. So, as you look at the scripture specifically, I asked Chris to put it on the screen, and uh, there you go. It comes back. <clears throat> kind of list off for me. As you read these, what are some words of interest or things that kind of jump out at you that may be of note? So, just let me hear. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. What else? Elect. Precious. And precious. We'll see that several times as well. Stumble. Stumble. Okay. What else is out there? I got some other stuff. Stumble becomes reduced to labor. To be inclusive of that. Be reminded of that. We are the So be inclusive of the cornerstone. Absolutely. <coughs> inclusive of the cornerstone. Disobedient. Reminded of that. What else? Anything else done about action? It's in scripture. It's in scripture. Being pointed back to scripture. What else? Anything else out there? Where is about that? Therefore, it's contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, believes, by no means. Believes, again, precious. Those who are disobedient, 
the stone which the builders reject. Again, the cornerstone, stumbling, a rock of offense, stumble, disobedience, appointed, chosen, royal, holy, special, proclaim, praise, marvelous, obtaining mercy when we previously had none. So, what I would like to do again is we kind of build on that scripture for six. Is kind of remind ourselves, I'm assuming, and I apologize for not being part of the discussion last week, but assuming uh, four and five was in that conversation last week as well. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So what's that saying? Someone give me a summary for what those four and five verses from last week said. Remember, facilitate conversation. It's all just a, a, a composite of all that he said thus far in First Peter. First of all, be thankful that we are a child of God. Be holy. And talk to him like he's our dad. He has a one-on-one -on -one relationship to us. Remain pure. Be kind to your neighbor. Be kind to others. And finally, be that cornerstone. So it's just a continuation of those things that we have as a consequence of what Christ did for us and how we're <coughs> Absolutely. Again, and that example, again, that stones, we talk about Christ being a cornerstone and a capstone. We talk about some of those things as well. But again, recognizing that that, that all service can reflect of us when we're in that example of the temple uh, and the construction of that temple being in that that uh, eternal inclusion in the family there that, uh, that we have been grafted in into. We are part of those stones that are now part of that built upon the foundation. Um, and again, that is that is something for, for great praise and hallelujah for, honestly, a Gentile community that was not part of that. We were not always part of God's plan, but not necessarily, and certainly this is why it was rejected in so many ways and, and not understood by the Jews, but being part of God's plan um, all along, and again, the opportunity to be a part of that, and again, the means for which through Jesus Christ, uh, we are we are called in that too. So again, the four and the five again gives us a great, excuse the pun, because we'll talk about getting the great foundation as we recognize that the chosen stone allowed for us to be part of of uh, the chosen people. Uh, we see all through Old Testament scripture, oftentimes again, the chosen people being referred to as Israelites. And, do. and a lot of conversations we've had about what does being of Israel mean? Now, we certainly think in terms now in context of Israel, being part of Israel, we think of a nation of Israel. When we think nation, we think boundaries again. Boundaries of national boundaries. But in context of scripture again too, it was not about national boundaries. Um, again, it's about that certainly the covenant, the covenant with the people again, uh, the children of Israel, and then certainly our inclusion of that as well in a people group, which we'll get to again as well too. So, as we kind of dive into, we had four to five, we look at six, and the six again, as Ms. Pat said too, it is contained in Scripture. So let's look at that first set of quotes here too. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chief cornerstone. And so this is where again, I need your assistance. I'll call upon you. That references back again to, to other scriptures. So Isaiah 28, 16. Isaiah 28. We're going to actually be on the video. We're going to focus on 28, 16. But when we get into the goodness of it, I'm going to have us read primarily a big chunk of Isaiah 28. So if someone could, let's start with Isaiah 28 and read that for me, please. Beginning of the chapter or just 16? Beginning of the chapter, and we'll go through... Uh, Chapter 28 is titled, Woe to Ephraim and Jerusalem. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which is at the end of the verdant valleys, to those who are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, who will bring them down to the earth with his hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, will be trampled underfoot. And the glorious beauty is a fading flower which is at the end, which is at the head of the verdant valley. 
like the first fruit before the summer, which is which an observer sees, he eats it up while it is still in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. But they also have erred through wine and through intoxicating drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are swallowed up by wine. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filth. No place is clean. Whom will he teach knowledge? And whom will he make to understand the message? Those just weaned from milk? Those just drawn from the breasts? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and caught. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men, who rule this people who are in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we are in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves. All right, anyways, we'll pause right there before we get to 16. So again, what's this context here that's leading to our scripture 16? Sound like a, sound like a positive people? Is it casting any of you in a positive light? No, and again, we can quickly talk about you know, the, the drunkenness and the wine. It's not about the drunkenness and the wine in this situation. It gets down to, again, the rule the rules and the law, this concept again to their belief again that they can, and so many of the Jews at the time took comfort in the law, which again, we've had conversations, the law is not bad, the law is good. However, in this situation, the Jews, and so many times, their comfort became again in just complying with the law. The whole comment, the, the, the scripture Amy talked about again too, you'll we'll see, we'll said a couple of times, Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little again. Talking about the rules again there, to just recognizing that if I do this, do that kind of situation again. So their comfort, their, their belief was that, that law was going to conquer death, their eventual death situation. So, so again, their, their belief again was in that law. And in a lot of ways, at the same time, we talk about the law not being bad. The law is still good because we need to recognize the need for for the law, certainly for the law of the unbelievers, the law of the lost. Again, they are still good there. However, we cannot replace the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the salvation gain to him by relying on the law and complying with the law. So that sets the stage there. Essentially, is what we're sitting here now saying in Isaiah prior to the conversation of Satan about the cornerstone, which is what is referenced in 1 Peter. So at that point, will you read on? Verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. The hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. Thank you, David. There we go. So again, that inclusive of our, of our 16. So I want to get to the context again, too, for where we are in, Peter, in the first Peter here again, while Peter's referencing back to that context. So again, back to our scripture. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and I want to trust him. We talk about Jesus as a cornerstone. What does a cornerstone mean? 
Other words, what, I've already used well, that term. It's, it's based, based, on, based, on, based on, on the base itself. You have to have a base to continue any, to do anything. Absolutely. It has to be a starting point in the base. A starting point to get to this. It's, it's the strong strength of holding something up. Absolutely. Again, that's how we apply it too. And physical construction, absolutely, is in the references, again, as, as oftentimes, certainly the New Testament talks about, is the, the referencing back to the construction of the temple again, and in Jesus' standpoint, him being the temple in a lot of ways too. So there's a lot of correlation analogy to construction, and that's thus the, the analogy that we get in Jesus as the cornerstone. So the importance of that cornerstone being set first. Okay. That established that established absolutely the the where, the where and the want to. Again, that cornerstone had to be what? First. Perfect. Perfect. Had to be perfect. What was that? Thing? I was saying the cornerstone is also the first. first. The, rest, yep. the rest of the foundation cannot be laid until that cornerstone is put and marked in place and secured because all the other foundation relies on that cornerstone. And, and we recognize again, too, is that being first, again, great word of two, and it being perfect, we recognize again, too, Jesus Christ. Jesus was, Jesus was in the beginning. And too, here's this context again too of Jesus coming later as Jesus being a backup plan because man's evil, man's sin, you know, caused God to have to do something different again. God was first. Jesus was part of that. Jesus in the, in the glorified Trinity again, part of in the beginning, being first and being perfect as well too. So let's refer to it. The word. The word, absolutely. The word. First John, absolutely there too. So let's look, at, let's look at Romans 9.33. Someone have that for? And while someone's getting 9.33, I'll also throw out Ephesians 2.20. So 9.33 for Romans. Stone the builders rejected. What's that mean? 
Let me back up before we get to the rejected stone. Let's think in terms of food, and it didn't come up. There will also be reference to Christ as the cornerstone. There will also be reference to Christ as what other stone? As a capstone as well. You'll hear that. You may see that in Scripture too. So, again, sometimes we try to think about cornerstone and capstone being used interchangeably. But from a construction standpoint, purely different. We talk about what a cornerstone is. What is a capstone? It's a finishing touch. It's a finishing touch on the top. Like the pyramids. It is the capstone. Yep, too. Uh, again, you've got the cornerstone at the top. The capstone is what goes on the top. That is the finish. That is the absolute finish. When you're building that wall, that temple, whatever kind of stuff to do, that's, that cornerstone sets the foundation to keep everything straight. The capstone glorifies it. I think. You know, again, you see a lot of decorative capstones, again, and keystones, things too. That also is what holds it together, ultimately, too. So again, recognize that you've got Christ as a foundational cornerstone who is a beginning. You have Christ as a capstone, which is the, the end. Again, to Christ representing the beginning and the end. The Alpha, the Omega, and again, inclusive of God's perfect plan for not only the Jews as a chosen people, but the grafted in Gentiles will be part of that, part of that chosen people as well, too. So again, we've got Cornish living stone. Cornerstones and capstones. Now, we mentioned there too in the next scripture too, was the stone the builders rejected as become a cornerstone. Okay. Now, why is it the rejected stone? Maybe we'll pick myself here too, but why is Christ referred to as the rejected stone there? Because his own people rejected him. Yeah. Not the people. Yeah. The stone is the Ten Commandments. We used to have a reference point. And the, the Ten Commandments, by definition, does condemn because no one can do that. That's why Christ says, I didn't come to condemn the law, I came to fulfill it. And through him is how we can be a part of the cornerstone and the capstone. He is the one, and as followers of him, that's how we. But the, the, the law itself is a condemnation because no one can do it. Absolutely. And he says, I came to fulfill it. Psalms 8, 118, 22. Someone pull. Psalm 118, 22. And then I'll have someone else grab Matthew 21, 42. I was going to say, I got, I looked up Matthew real quick, and that's what I was trying to remember about it being said. About All right, so you have Matthew 21, 42. Yeah. Someone else, Psalms 118, 22. And then we'll have Acts 4, 11. All right. Who's got Acts 4, 11? Give me a hand. Okay. If not, I'll get to it. Acts 4.11. Alright. You got, you got Isaiah, you got Psalm 118. If you read Psalm 118, 22 for us. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alright. Again, that reference back. We're talking about the stones rejected here too. If you read in context of Psalm as well, which for the sake of time we may not get the whole context, but the same situation too. Recognize this in conversation about the, about the temple itself. And again, that rejected cornerstone. Matthew 21, 42. Alright. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. All right, in Acts 4.11. Someone grab it? I got it. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Okay. Yeah, over and over again, that same reference back to being rejected again, too. And so, is it surprising to God? About being Christ being rejected? No. Not at all. He knew everything. He knew everything again, too. Not only was it not a surprise again, too, prophetically, all through, is declared, declared that Christ will be the rejected again, too. The disciples repeatedly, even though I think you know, Richard mentioned it, I think on Sunday, too, you know, repeatedly, he was like, hey, you know, Christ, I'm going to get ready to go die. I'm going to get ready to kill it. And it's totally just kind of seemed to be missed in all those conversations again, too. Yet again, those who knew the law and knew the law and knew scripture and knew prophecy should absolutely have seen um, who Christ was. But yet again, he was the rejected stone as well. So let's take a look real quick. There's a, there's a parable, and I'll read it to us as well. Um, out there, and again, we're we'll saying parable. Anyway, a writing or such. When Solomon's temple was being built, it was forbidden for the sound of hammers to be heard at the job site. 
because it was a holy place of worship. Never thought about that. All that construction going on the temple again too. You know, that, that construction can be a not a pleasant thing to take place. So it doesn't surprise me that there's a requirement here again too that no, no sound, no dust, no root disturbance, whatever else. And when building the temple. Again. But it was for building for the sound of hammers to be heard at the job site because it was a holy place of worship. You can't have worship with construction going on in the background. I think we would attest to that. If we had a lot of construction going on too, we might be somewhat distracted. We get distracted even more. Say again. No, no, it's, it's a written parable. It's not even scripture. Okay. Kind of like no, 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 it's a written scripture. It's just a kind of a, a story that kind of pulls it together. Okay. What this meant for the construction was that each and every 20 ton stone had to have a shop drawing and was made several miles away in the quarry. Several miles away, each stone was carefully cut for its exact spot in the temple. So that means that cornerstone was crafted, created, made perfect somewhere else and delivered. From the very start, there was a plan for each stone. The very first stone to be delivered was the capstone. But that's the last stone needed in construction. So the builder said, what is this? This doesn't look like any of the first stones we need. Put it over there for now. Well, years went by, and the grass grew over the capstone, and everyone generally forgot it. Finally, the construction was done, and the builder said, send us the capstone into the quarry over there. Word came back from the quarry, we already did. So they were confused. Kind of sound like a correlation there with the Jews in this situation, too. Then someone remembered what they had done with the very first stone sent to them. It was taken from its lowly position among the overgrown weeds where it had been forgotten, and it was now honored in the final ceremony to complete the temple. Thus the scripture says, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And again, that is kind of an analogy of Christ in that situation, too. Again, Christ being that perfect stone coming, certainly not being recognized, being cast aside. But again, his glory would never be faded. His glory would never be denied again, too. Uh, it was an absence of recognition from the builders at the time. So again, that reflects Christ being as the rejected stone. Now let's take a look again, too, at the third portion of that. Uh, a stone that causes people to stone and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Some give some thought to that. They're using themselves as a comparator. That's what they're doing. They're saying, I can do this. I am abiding by this law, not the mercy and grace of Christ. They're depending on themselves to determine their destiny. So does that make, so that, is that how it makes Christ to be a stumbling stone for some? No. Okay. Again, in that situation, those who, it says, again, Christ, in the situation, is going to be a stone, a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And again, it's to the Jewish people at the time, is what we It says the stumble because they disobey the message. There you go. 100%. Because, again, the message being a prophecy that they should know inside out, again, to the little parable we talked about too there. The, the capstone that's thin in the weeds that they haven't paid attention to, they miss it, they stumble over, they trip over that situation because again it's been discarded and not recognized for the value that it is again too. And to those who resist that and do not recognize the value of that capstone, the displacement of that capstone again too, it is a stumbling block to men. And that's where the Jews found themselves that day. They could not get past the law and understanding. And, and I would say so many times when we've kind of talked about this in the past, but so many times we certainly see the Jews of, how do you miss that? How do you miss it? How do you miss it? Miss it? How do we? Again, we have, a, we have a whole society now, a large portion who are continuing to miss that. But at the same time, too, if we came in as strong as our beliefs are today and someone came in and tried to tell us how wrong we were, we would equally be that resistant. We would equally be, there's no way, there's no other way. So in this situation, you too, recognizing that Jews were the chosen people. Again, as part of God's plan, as the chosen people, they were ingrained with the law. They knew that, however, that became, back to Isaiah, their drunkenness of understanding, their drunkenness of, of hey, I, my, 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 my blurred vision, my everything associated with that is because, again, 
I believe I'm doing good. I'm holding firm in what my fathers have taught and what I've been taught. I'm holding firm to what the entire you know, Torah at the time and everything else had, had said. So they were naturally resistant to Jesus and what they were seeing too. So um, change. Resistance to change. Yeah. And I just would just say, I think a recent conversation too is, I think um, we kind of we kind of talked this a little bit Tuesday morning too. You know, we find ourselves what we believe to be, you know, the Bible Belt at times. And so, however, those who visit family and other parts of the country, um, you may hear slightly different emphasis on the scripture. Um, you may hear things that feel Kind of odd. Well, that's not what that's not that's not what we necessarily believe about this, that, and the other. Professing Christians, professing believers, but in a different region, we're standing there saying, "Hey, they got it wrong. We got it right." Okay, guard your hearts against that. We are called to guard our hearts against those things too. Because guess what? We may be Bible better in America. But there's a whole lot of folks in Israel and a lot closer to where it comes to do it. And it's a word, you know. Guard our hearts about being haughty and arrogant about what we know. Hold firm to what we believe in our, in our non-negotiable truths. But again, guard our hearts from being uh, being haughty in that some some way, shape, or form. Again, to guard our hearts from our presuppositions, our um, misguidings, our um, progressive interpretations, allowing that to be a stumbling stone that we miss. Miss what God has for us, uh, and certainly through those who don't believe and understand Jesus Christ, it is a stumbling stone for them as well. So, if I may, please, this part right here reminds me of those in the church. And I'm talking about capital C, not this one, not that one, not any church specific, but just as in general. Got it. The ones that get stuck or hung up on the tradition of religion and forget that there's actual doctrinal truth black and white on a page that you can go check it out for yourself but they get so caught up in traditional religion what they were taught what their pastors always told them you know what they're used to knowing and that's why it's again so important you're exactly right there too it is hugely important for us to gather together as corporate worship and i'm very thankful that y'all have been attentive in hearing what i'm saying but you don't listen to anything I say. Get into the book and find, find out yourself again, too. It's about your personal relationship, personal relationship with, with Christ and personal relationship with the Word again, too. And in that, you have that relationship and get away from religion in the sense that being in receiving mode and someone else is teaching and telling them, I'm taking our guys stuff, too. That relationship is intimately knowledge with Christ, and we'll probably do that as well, too. Richard Sunday morning mentioned uh, about the Baptists had a split, you know, 1989, somewhere. And that was because they they were in a different region and they were they were taught differently and so they and you know that there's a the Southern Baptist was split. So he mentioned that Sunday morning in part of his sermon. And I, I, I remember, you know, we lived in all parts of the country and I remember some of that happening. And that's the danger of again, that's the danger of putting denominational exactly. labels on meaning everything into it. Um, yeah. hmm. Hmm. Many people read the Bible word for word instead of story by story. If you read it story by story, it's pretty much undisputable. But if we read it word by word, we can make the Bible say anything we want. And I think we're all, Baptist, Methodist, myself, are much guilty of that, is that we look at a sentence and we use that as a how it focuses on us to make us look better. But if we read the story, story by story, it's pretty much indisputable. Absolutely, it's true in the sense that there's actually kind of a Movements are more. There's a school of thought that again too. You know, just read it for what it is. And and, and so many of the naysayers out there want us to reject the author. Because again, rejecting the author and focusing just on that word, you're right. You can spin it whichever way you want to spin it. But it is the author and recognizing not just the author, but it is the main character from the front end, the back end of Jesus Christ again too. And all that is woven together. And it's through the richness, richness of the depth for which we dive into His Word that you see it. You see it pulled together. Again, you take out of context and read things on face value and not appreciate the depth of which God's word is, then again, too, it can be 
Misinterpreted. Misinterpreted. Again, to certainly try to be used against us, which is, again, why we are called to guard ourselves against that, to be in the Word, know that again, so we can always have a defense, again, for our faith and what we believe in the Word. So it's a living Word. You read it a thousand times, and you've got 999 different meanings all focused on the same thing. Yep. And probably, and I, know, I know what you meant there as far as the meaning, not necessarily, but certainly the yeah. application yeah. to where you are in your walk um, is absolutely a, a living word there, too. So we just went through 6 through 8, and the quotes references back again to so many other scriptures, too. And believe it or not, we've got to talk so long, we have almost got that quote. So. <laughs> but either way, we'll close out again, too. But you are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. His own special people that you proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness, Gentiles and Jews, non-believers, into his marvelous life, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Again, what does it mean, was not a people? Again, clearly we're people. Yeah, we were not a people. We were not part of necessarily of that, of that we're part of the plan, not part of that inclusion yet again, too, until it was absolutely clarified again, too. Christ through his death and resurrection and conquering of death again gave opportunity again through the Gentiles, again, those who believe in faith and believe in that, to be part of that entire family, to be part of that people, but are now the people of God who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And again, that is through our belief in Jesus Christ. And mercy walked in. Amen to all. <laughs> again, to such depth, such rich, richness, such good news here again, too. Um, and for the geek engineering need opportunity to talk about, you know, cornerstones and capstones and structure and everything too. That's kind of a good thing too. So, um, I've never heard of that capstone. I'm glad you brought that up. I've never heard of that. So, any final close, any final comments, final thoughts? We've got two more minutes. <laughs> Back on that verse eight, the one part keeps popping out of me. To which they were also, to which they also were appointed. Yes. That part. You have you have the nation of Israel, you have the Jew who God chose as their people, and they have all the Old Testament to go by, and as I read in, in the Old Testament, you know, they have precept upon precept, line upon line, and all this, that, and the other. But when it came to the fulfillment of that word to which they were appointed. And I think that so many Christians today have gotten comfortable and complacent in the word to which they were appointed. And thereby, we have become so disobedient. We, we wonder why. Absolutely. We, 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 gladly, we, we, we gladly wear the label mm -hmm. and yet not reflect the light. Yep. So, um, and many of, the, many of us are going to be absolutely gobsmacked when we find out that we're the ones that stumbled when we were pointing our fingers at everyone else, going, ha ha, you tripped. Yep. So guard our hearts against that again, too. Yep. Humility is the, again, go back and we can talk to the attitude here and there, too. We've had some great conversations on that as well. But again, that humble heart, again, that meekness, that recognized recognition that there is no haughtiness, there is no arrogance, there is nothing of achievement of our own, uh, other than, again, that faith, that choice, again, to believe. Uh, in, our, in, in our Savior Jesus Christ. So with that, let's close in prayer and I will get us to see this. Heavenly Father, Lord, give me thank you again. We thank you again for your word. Again. I thank you for the men and women here again, the brothers and sisters again, the willing to share and again be passionate about your grace and again and how precious it is in our lives. Again, Lord. May we be equally passionate when we go out to our families as we leave here tonight, equally passionate when we go out again to our workplaces tomorrow again, Lord. May, be, may we be about spreading your word again right now as we begin to. Is all through the power of your Son Jesus Christ and all through the sacrifice of your Son Jesus Christ and nothing from any works that we can do again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, again, for being that cornerstone. We thank you, Lord, for being that capstone from the beginning and the end to make that perfect temple again, too, and make that perfect union again a part of your family, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Christian that we pray. Amen. Amen.